Morning, friends. Greetings and welcome to the Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I'm your host, pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I use nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your health and vitality and well-being and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body. You are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health challenge. That is why we are here every day on The Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 30 years of practicing pharmacy, I have seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes and hypertension and obesity and skin diseases like eczema, psoriasis, rosacea, acne, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle, but what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure. Because the human biological system is a healing system, it's a regenerating system, it is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment basis, and while some folks may call that healing, renewing, regenerating system a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health or nutrition or prescription drugs, if you want to wean yourself off your meds and get on a good nutritional supplement program, we welcome your calls on the bright side. 844-236-6010 is our number. We've got a guest coming up at the bottom of the hour. Andreas Wecker is the founder of Andreas Seed Oils and the inventor of an interesting press for uh, releasing oils or extracting oils from seeds. Andreas Wecker is a, a former gold, uh, gold medal winning Olympic gymnast. And he's gotten himself into the oil business. We're going to be talking to Andreas about seed oils and about his press at the bottom of the hour. He's got some interest, interesting things to say about essential fatty acids and oils. Uh, we'll be talking to Andreas at the bottom of the hour. So we'll get to your phone calls here in our second segment today. 844-236-6010 is our number if you have questions or comments or if you just want to share a success story. We love hearing those. 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side. If you want to purchase any of our Truth Skin Health products, including our Truth 5% retinol gel if you're dealing with hyperpigmentation aging accelerated aging or age spots or you just want an overall skin tonic without having to deal with preservatives or fragrances or oils or waxes or fillers or emulsifiers or surfactants or water or any of the stuff that they find in most skincare products you know 90 to 95 percent of your skincare product is nothing it is not for you has nothing to do with the health of your skin if you're interested in 100 percent active and functional skin health ingredients if you don't want to waste any money on fillers and and waxes and oils etc preservatives and fragrances check out our truth skin health products at truthtreatments.com and of course if you want to sign up to join me and my mission to educate the world about the power and importance of a good nutritional supplement program if you want to make some money while you're doing it please call 866-735-2470 that's the phone number for the bright side ben team you can also sign up to join the bright side ben team or purchase any of the longevity products you hear advertised on the program or recommended on the program by going to my website brightsideben.com you can also check out our blog pharmacistben.com and criticalhealthnews.com you can sign up on all the websites or you can purchase products off all the websites as well brightsideben.com pharmacistben.com and criticalhealthnews.com 844-236-6010 is our number if you're on hold we'll get your calls here in our second segment and then if you'd like to speak to us we do have a couple lines open for you at 844-236-6010 Okay, so I want to continue talking about the sugars, which are the building blocks of the fibers, the insoluble and soluble fibers, which are like chains of sugar. Yes, we're talking about the ketogenic diet still. We're talking about fats and the importance of fats. But via this fiber connection, there is an interesting relationship between sugar and fat. In fact, sugar and fat are really the same thing. They're both carbohydrates. Sugar is a carbohydrate. Fat is a carbohydrate. Fat's a little bit longer, a little bit bigger molecule than most sugars are. But basically, they're carbon, hydrogen, oxygen. That makes them a carbohydrate, technically. Nonetheless, when we think of sugars, we don't typically think of fats and vice versa. When we think of fats, we don't typically think of sugars. But via this connection, this fiber link, sugar and fat are connected. If you're going to go high fat, you got to make sure you're using your fiber. Fiber is basically just a long chain of sugars. 
Yesterday we left off talking about the essential sugars. These are what some people call glyconutrients. Glyco means sugar, nutrient means nutrient, something that's useful for the body. And you know, that's kind of a weird idea because we're always beating up on sugar. We're always thinking that sugar is the bad guy. And in a way it is because we get way too much of one of the glyconutrients. We get way too much of one of the essential nutrients or essential sugars. And this is, of course, the most well-known of the sugars called glucose. It's got eight major essential sugars, eight major glyconutrients. The one everybody knows about, the one we get so much of, the one that we beat up on a lot for good reason, is the glyconutrient or the essential sugar called glucose. Most of us get way too much of this stuff. Although, I have to say, arguably anyway, it is the most important, certainly one of the most important biomolecules, biochemicals in the body. Yesterday we talked about mannose, another essential sugar or glyconutrient. Mannose is useful for urinary tract infections, as we said yesterday. It's also got a role to play in brain health and nervous the health of the nervous system. Mannose has anti-inflammatory properties, and it can also help lower blood sugar, and it can also help lower blood fats, both of which make mannose useful if you're going to go ketogenic. If you want to go into the ketogenic diet, you can get mannose capsules or mannose supplements. Usually, they sell mannose for urinary tract infections, but given all the benefits that you get from this essential sugar, supplementing with mannose is not a bad idea, particularly if you're going to go ketogenic. Yesterday, we left the program off talking about a third essential sugar, and this one is super duper important. We're going to spend some time talking about this one. It's tremendously valuable for the health of the intestine as well as for the skin. And this is really an important point because anytime something is good for the lining of the intestine, it's going to also have an important role to play in the skin. Both the lining of the intestine and the surface of the skin are made up of the same type of cell. So anything that's going to heal your gut, heal your intestine, is going to have some benefits for the skin too, and thus the importance of N acetyl or acetyl glucosamine. Sure, you've heard of glucosamine. Almost everybody has heard of glucosamine, but at the same time, hardly anyone has heard of an acetyl glucosamine. And while they both contain a little chunk of glucosamine, they are different. N acetyl glucosamine found in the brain, thyroid, liver, intestine. It's found in the um, sebaceous glands in the skin. It's found in the skin itself. It's found in the blood vessels. It plays an important role in the health of all of these structures, as well as in circulatory system health. It's crazy important, and considering the fact that so few people have heard of this stuff, it really is uh, it's something that we really want to talk about, uh, at least for the next few days. Glucosamine, as most people know, is an anti-arthritis substance, but N-acetylglucosamine, while it does contain glucosamine and it can be helpful for folks dealing with arthritis, that N-A part, N-acetyl, the N-A part that's associated with glucosamine makes NAG very, very, very important for the digestive tract. Now, glucosamine itself is going to play a role in the health of the intestine, but N-acetylglucosamine, NAG, by putting that little N-A part on there, that makes NAG crazy important for digestive health. It's, in my opinion, it's a must-have. You say, well, how come you haven't talked about it so much? Well, I have. I've talked about it a lot, but I just never said it specifically because, you see, whenever we talk about bone soup, whenever we talk about bone broth protein, which you could find, by the way, at brightsidehealthproducts.com, bright, I'm sorry, brightsidehealth.com, brightsidehealth.com, uh, anytime we talk about bone soup or bone broth or cartilage, in a lot of ways, we're talking about NAG because cartilage contains high amounts of NAG, and this is one of the reasons why cartilage and bone soup are so important for the health of the digestive tract. If you're dealing with celiac disease, Crohn's disease, ulcerative colitis, any digestive health issue, bone broth, bone soup, bone broth protein are must-haves. And one of the reasons they're must-haves is because of their NAG content. If you're dealing with any digestive health issues, bone broth, bone broth protein, NAG, and there's also some wonderful plant material that contains NAG as well. We're going to be talking about this wonderful nutritional supplement for the next few days. If you're on hold, hang tight. We'll get to you when we come back from our break. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You are listening to The Bright Side. We'll be back after this. are back on the bright side. Thanks for joining us, friends. We're on the air Monday through Friday, 8 to 9 Pacific and 10 to 11 Central Time. We're also 
archived at brightsideben.com and benfuchsarchives.com. Got search engines up. Thank you to Peter in the UK for setting that one up, benfuchsarchives.com. And uh, you can check out all the programs. We've got four plus years of archives at brightsideben.com and also benfuchsarchives.com. If you want to purchase any of the Longevity products, you hear advertiser recommended on the program, you can go to brightsideben.com or criticalhealthnews.com or pharmacistben.com. And of course, if you're interested in our Truth Skin Health products, Truth Retinol 5% Gel for anti-aging, Truth Serum and Truth Balm for anti-aging and for healing as well. Both wonderful sources of vitamin C, moisturizing and skin softening. And our Truth Omega-6 Healing Cream if you're dealing with rashes or broken skin or a sunburn, diaper rash for a baby, our Omega-6 Healing Cream is tremendously healing. And I've been working with vitamin C for healing now, for topical vitamin C for healing for over 30 years. You can check out all our Truth Skin Health products at truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. We're going to talk to Andreas Wecker at the bottom of the hour. Andreas is a former gold-winning uh, gymnast, German gymnast, Olympic gold medal-winning German gymnast. And he's also now in the seed oil business, and he's invented a machine that, uh, according to Andreas anyway, and he'll tell us more about it in the next segment, uh, according to uh, Andreas Wecker, this new machine uh, doesn't create the same kind of damage to the oils that ordinary presses do. This is a very important point about oils, and this is something Dr. Wallach talks about a lot, and that is the fact that they're very fragile and they're very unstable. And in the world of nutrition, when something is good for you, it's high energy, got lots of nutritional value, sometimes it's very unstable. There's a relationship between instability and high energy, and substances that are high energy are good because they're high energy, but they're bad because they're unstable stable. And so making sure that your nutritional supplements and your nutri the nutritional components in food are stable is really, really important. That's why you don't want to use a lot of heat. Uh, that's why you don't want to burn your meat. That's why you don't want to heat oils. That's for sure. And you don't want to process oils. And even according to Dr. Uh, Andreas Wecker, anyway, uh, even ordinary presses can damage oil. And he invented a machine that uh, somehow, and he'll tell us more about it, somehow it uh, doesn't have the same kind of high pressure that ordinary presses do. And it uh, makes maintains the integrity of the oil a little bit better. And we'll be talking to Andres at the bottom of the hour. Uh, let's see. Time to hit your phones. Tomorrow we'll continue talking about N-acetylglucosamine. And I absolutely, absolutely love this stuff, even though you never hear about it. Uh, it's got so many health benefits. And as we'll find out in the next day or two, it's also very, very important as an anti-aging ingredient for the skin. Okay. 844-236-6010 is our number. Let us go to Todd in Florida. Good morning, Todd. Welcome to the Bright Side. How are you, Ben? Hey, buddy. What's going on, man? Well, what I'm calling, I'm calling for someone else who has a problem with yeast infection. And another question also is about birth control. What are the side effects or the consequences of taking birth control? They're awful. They're, I mean, uh, well, it's two, two, two important questions there. Now, I assume you mean a, a, a vaginal yeast infection, right? Not right, a fung right. All right. All right. I think bacteria, uh, there's a major relationship for all yeast infections, internal or vaginal, it doesn't really matter. There's a major relationship, an important relationship between bacteria and fungal. Fungus. You know, fungus live in our body, and fungus are an important part of good health. Yeast are a very important part of good health. Uh, this, I want to be very clear here, because we get this idea that yeast are the bad guys, and you got to eliminate them. No, that's not how it works. Yeast are an important part of good health. They're uh, uh, an important constituent. They're an important denizen, citizen of the human body. It's when the yeast overgrow. Bacteria, likewise. Bacteria are an important part of good health, as most people know by now. Certainly, if you're listening to this program, you know bacteria an important part of good health, but you don't want it to overgrow, and you don't want the wrong kinds to overgrow, and you don't want the wrong kinds to grow. It all has to do with balance. When you have a yeast infection, you have a problem not with yeast, but with the balance of yeast and the uh, relationship between yeast and bacteria. So all yeast infections need to be regarded, systemic or vaginal, as a sign of dysbiosis, which means messed up bacteria. Now, uh, certainly sugar is involved. I'll talk about that here in a second. But the first thing you want to do if you're dealing with the yeast infection, if it's a vaginal yeast infection, well, any yeast infection, uh, is to work on your digestive system, surprise, surprise, especially when it comes to good bacteria. Now, you can supplement with good bacteria, but if you're using, if you're doing anything to kill off those good bacteria, the yeast are going to overgrow. So if you've got a digestive problem, you're eating the wrong foods, you've got leaky gut syndrome, chances are you're dealing with messed up bacteria. Long story short, use probiotics, use fermented foods, uh, caloric restriction, vegetable juices. These are 
are all strategies for improving the health of the gut, of the intestine, and then reducing your sugar intake dramatically. Sugar feeds yeast, and we're all getting too much sugar. And of course, you know, if you're listening to this program, that, that bread is sugar, and cereal is sugar, and pasta is sugar, and potatoes are sugar, and rice is sugar, and uh, certainly fruit juices and fruits and desserts are sugar. Anything you could do to reduce sugar load is going to improve yeast infections. A couple other things that you might want to do is use supplements that help the body process sugar. The B vitamins, of course, are the most important, uh, or among the most important, thiamine and niacin especially. You can use the ultimate niacin, the sweeties from Longevity, selenium, the Fucoi Z. Uh, has anti-diabetic or anti-sugar properties. Go to the health food store and get alpha lipoic acid, 400 milligrams a day. Taurine, which is an amino acid, maybe two or 300 milligrams a day. And arginine, another amino acid that can help the body process sugar. Um, there's tons more stuff, but basically you're looking at controlling or stabilizing or uh, modifying bacteria in the gut using all the things we talk about on this program all the time, including a good probiotic supplement and then uh, sugar metabolizing nutrients as well as reducing your sugar intake. Birth control pills are awful, except for one thing. They do control birth. And if you're going to be sexually active, they can be handy dandy, no doubt about it. But they are major hormones. They trick the body hormonally and that is a, there's going to be a price to pay whenever you trick the body, especially at a fundamental level like hormones. That's why birth control pills are associated with blood clots. That's why they're associated with heart disease. That's why they're associated with cancer. That's why they're associated with uh, migraine headaches. That's why they're associated with every crappy thing that can happen to the body, pretty much. Oh, yeah, skin problems, too. So here's the deal. If you need birth control, you need birth control, and they're handy. There's no doubt about it. I wouldn't take birth control pills for PCOS or for cramping, though. That's why doctors sometimes use birth control pills, and that's a very bad idea. But if you need birth control, you know, if you're going to be fooling around and you don't want to deal with the alternatives, they are handy. But you are playing with fire, in my opinion, if you use them. Thanks for your call, Todd. i got to motivate. i got a bunch of calls here, okay? I hope I helped you out, bro. Take care, man. All right, let's go to Kathy in Minnesota. Good morning. What's up? Welcome to the Bright Side. Hi, Ben. Hey, Kathy. Hi. I am currently breastfeeding, and I okay. have a bunch of digestive issues that have been happening, including a facial rash around my nose and mouth area. Did you have them before? No. Nope. Uh, oh, you got them uh, once you got delivered your baby? Yeah, I've had, he is 20 months. So okay, just within you, the last two months, I've started having digestive issues and now the facial rash. Okay, a couple of things. First of all, you may be running, nutri you may be deficient in nutrients, your, uh, especially fatty nutrients. They may be coming out of your breast milk and you may be losing them. So you want to make sure you're supplementing if you're not already, especially with essential fatty acids. Uh, secondly, excuse me, uh, you may have issues with your intestine in terms of bacteria, good bacteria. Uh, that sounds like dysbiosis to me. So I'd be getting on a good probiotic. That means messed up bacteria, by the way, dysbiosis. Uh, I'd be getting on a good probiotic supplement and then do a food diet and see what foods are specifically causing you problems. Kathy, if you can hold on just one second, I'm, I, I'll finish up when we come back from our break, okay? Don't go away. Uh, I'm Pharmacist Ben. We, we'll uh, come back with Andrea Wecker and then finish up with Kathy's phone call. When we come back from our break, you're listening to The Bright Side. Okay, we are back on The Bright Side. I'm Pharmacist Ben. We're talking to uh, Kathy in Minnesota. We're just going to finish up real quickly, Kathy, and then I want to get our guest on, Andrea Wecker, former uh, gold gold medal winning Olympic athlete. I guess he's not a former gold medal winning Olympic athlete, gymnast, but he's a, also a skin uh, uh, oil guy, and he's invented an oil press uh, oil press that, that uh, conserves the power of skin uh, of uh, essential fatty acids and, and the good fats that are found in oils, those fragile fats. We'll talk to Andres here in a moment. Kathy, real quick, uh, as far as your uh, gut health goes, do we have Kathy? Are you there, ma'am? Yep. Yes, yes. Okay. Okay. So, uh, as I said before, we went to our break. Make sure you're using essential fatty acids whenever you have a skin health issue, especially if you're breastfeeding. You may be losing those essential fatty acids. Uh, and skin health and essential fatty acids go hand in hand. So, make sure you're using those. Uh, and then start working on your gut, uh, probiotics, as well as uh, vegetable juices. The fiber in vegetable juices supports gut health. You may want to go ketogenic, uh, the ketogenic diet, too. That can be helpful. Yeah, can um, I do that while I'm breastfeeding? Yeah, you can certainly do it when you're breastfeeding. Uh, okay. Babies are in, babies are in ketosis. Okay, babies oh. are yeah, babies are in ketosis. Your breast milk is ketogenic anyway, so yes, you oh. certainly can uh, go ketogenic. Um, 
and then also uh, uh, make sure that you're uh, doing a food diary, Look, okay. linking your digestive health issues to specific foods, linking sure. your digestive health issues to specific foods. That's very important. Uh, and then let's see what else I want to tell you here. I guess um, that was my main question. I read yeah, vitamin E also. One, one last thing, vitamin E can be helpful. 400 international units a day of vitamin E. I guess my concern was that if I switch my diet, that I would lose my supply for breastfeeding because that's a lot of what I read, but that's not true. I say that one more time. I was reading about the ketogenic diet, and they advised not to do it while you were breastfeeding. Because of the low yeah. carb? Because of the yeah. low carb? Well, I'm not sure necessarily if that's the case, but uh, okay. you're going to have to make okay. your own de de decisions on that. Uh, sure. Ketogenesis. A lot of people think that ketone production is some kind of abnormal state, but it's not. Uh, I would personally be, I wouldn't, I don't think that there's a problem with the ketogenic diet. You're going to have to make your own decision on that. But keep in yeah. mind, breastfeeding is ketogenic. Uh, newborn babies are in ketosis. That's their normal state. Uh, the only issue would be, and that's this is maybe what people are thinking, uh, that uh, you're not going to have enough sugars, uh, but I don't think that's going to be a problem. If you've got enough protein, your body can convert that into sugar. I don't think that's an issue. You'll have to make okay. your own decision. Okay. Uh, all right. Thanks for your call. Appreciate it. Thank you right. so much. Thank you. God bless you. Good luck with everything. All right. I'm very uh, excited to have our guest on here. Andres Wecker is a gold medal winning Olympic athlete, and now he's un come to understand the power of oils and nutrition. I don't know. Maybe he understood it before, but uh, Andres has developed, invented actually, a machine that helps conserve the active materials in oils, which are unstable, as we've talked about many times on this program. Please welcome to the bright side, Andreas Wecker. Good morning, Andreas. Morning, Ben. How Good to doing? talk to you. So uh, we don't have a heck of a lot of time, and you have a wonderful story. Uh, real briefly, how did you get to understand the power of essential fats? Is it something that you knew about as an athlete, or did you did you uh, develop an understanding of it after your after your career, after your athletic career? Tell us a little bit about how you got into it. Okay, so the main thing was uh, I took over 14 years, the last 14 years of my career. So I was in total in, in four Olympics. Um, I was uh, 28 years I spent of my life in gymnastics. So and when I stopped, um, I took the last 14 years of those 28, I took uh, on a daily base painkiller. So ibuprofen, diclofenac, all kinds of things. And uh, it was like a ritual, so morning and in the midday to get over the day because gymnastics is a hard, is a hard sport on, the, on your body, on the joints and everything. And uh, somehow you have to overstay every day and you train the hard sport to, uh, you train every day on your limit, on your physical limit, on your mentally limit, everything. You mean you push yourself so to that edge is what you're saying? Absolutely. Yeah, that's, that's every day. So that's when you want to be Olympic champion, you want to win something, you have to go this far. But you go over problems. There is no gymnast in the world who's who's Olympic champion and say there is no. They don't take um, painkiller. Yeah. So really, all, well, hang on one second. All are you saying all gymnasts, Olympic gymnasts, are on some kind of painkiller? Yes. Wow. And now you're talking about aspirin as a painkiller. You're not necessarily talking about opioids or anything uh, like that. No, no, no. I, ibuprofen. Ibuprofen. Aspirin yeah. is sometimes sometimes just to wake you up with a nice coffee. Just okay. <laughs> you wake yeah, up in the so morning with a little aspirin when you're a gymnast? Yeah, no, not, <laughs> not, no more. As, as a gymnast, yes. yes okay. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah, I, I, right. grew, I grew up in, the, in a country of aspirin. So, um, okay, that's yeah. true. You did. Germany. The country of aspirin. So, yep. And when I, when I stopped in 2004, I stopped also to take my, my painkiller. So... And a year later, it starts, I get, yeah, constipation and sometimes diarrhea. And then in two, 2006, I got very, very sick. So I got Crohn's disease. Oh, wow. And it was, and it was almost killing me. So in 2006, um, I had no idea from oils at this point. Absolute no idea. I was working on a couple of things what had to do with oils. So I was starting actually to look into it. But... Um, the main issue was not, I, I couldn't see any, any further. So, and uh, everything was based on those grinders. Uh, so I, I, I tell you a little bit later, but what I want to say is I got so sick. I was losing in six, six weeks of diarrhea, bloody diarrhea. I lost 80% of my blood and I lost 
45 pounds, so I was 84 pounds left when I came in the hospital. And the first thing what they do is take the blood, right? To the, to, okay. So it was so I fall, I was falling unconscious, and they tried to pick me up or to wake me up in yeah like an hour, and then they found uh, out what my problem was. So I was on intensive care, and they put me I think on five after another five uh, blood transfusion. So I got on the first night already five blood transfusions, so it was a lot. Wow. So, and and then I was in total seven weeks in the hospital, spent oh. a lot, uh, was like a guinea pig, you know, colonoscopy, they're going up, up uh, from the mouth in, from the bottom in. I mean, it was ridiculous. And so you were much. fine and you were healthy, you were perfectly healthy until while you were an athlete. So you didn't notice any of this Absolutely. stuff until, wow. No, no, no. I had, I had already this, uh, sometimes I had already uh, problems. I was very, very sensitive. I, I just was as a child already sensitive with my stomach. So if I eat something wrong or so, I got right away diarrhea or I get constipated. And so I had, I had already, I'm, I'm sensitive type, you know, so emotional okay. and so on. That's, that's a lot what I, what I, what is, what is actually playing with it. Okay. So, but what I want to say is, um, it was hard for me to understand that the doctors couldn't help me. So I was kind of uh, helpless, or they were helpless in the, in a hospital. They was actually helpless to help me. So you had to help they yourself. Me, yes, but it cost me a couple of weeks to, to find out, and I was just, I had no iron left, so my, my heart beat uh, at, the, at the normal, um, when I was laying down, was about, I would say, um, 120, 130. So you were you were a sick guy there, Andreas Becker. Hey, Andreas, we we got to take a we got to take a break. I'm sorry. Uh, yes. Very yes. fascinating story. Hang tight, and we'll finish up when we come back. Okay, we are back on the bright side, talking to Andreas Wecker, gold medal winning Olympic athlete, and now nutritional nutritionist, I guess. Andreas, is that fair to say? You're a nutritionist? Do you understand no, about I'm nutrition? Not a nutritionist. Not no, a nutritionist. No, no, no. Okay. No. All right. So let's talk a little bit. I love your story, but I also love the uh, yeah. invention that your uh, oil invention. Yes. So I, I want to switch gears here a little bit uh, and talk about the, the machine and then talk about your oils as well. So tell us about the machine first of all. Okay, so the machine came in existence to a dream. So I got a dream, and I was starting already. I had a, I had worked uh, with a very small machine already, but I figured out something is wrong. Okay, so and then I got this dream, and I was looking two months uh, for like a mechanic to to catch my 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 idea and to create a new press. So and that's what we did. So and um, that was nine years ago, and since seven years uh, I'm running this machine. Well, what's the, the, what, what the is this, what's so special? The yeah, what's uh -huh. okay. The difference between a normal expeller press and my expeller press is very very simple. Uh, all expeller presses are on the market are actually not presses, they are grinders. So what they do, they fill up the room inside and they grind to specific uh, knives on the, on the expeller in the front and they grind the seats against the seat. So what you do, you have a lot of friction, you change the molecular structure and you have a lot of oxidation you bring in. And that's the main problem. So the most oils what coming out, even if it is just like 100, 110, 120, 130 degrees, it doesn't matter. It is already oxidized, not not just by by uh, heat, but it's already molecular structured uh, or changed uh, by by this principle. So, and the normal normal press company like Balins, Udo's, or whatever uh, you can take, um, they have to change their expeller all three months. Because my they're damaged. I, exact. So my principle is total simple. I fill up. I fill up the. Uh, I don't fill up anything in between. So I just bring it to the front, and it's working like an almost like an hydraulic press. So we have till we have uh, about 30, 50 tons on the front. So and this is screeching out in a fraction of a second. There's no no change of structural uh, molecular structure. And we have the cleanest, nice, uh, most tasty oil uh, on the planet. 
So when an oil tastes like the seed, that's an indicator for you to, if it is not tasting like the seed, don't touch it. Very simple. If it doesn't taste oils, like a seed, you're saying if the oil itself doesn't taste seed-like, then you don't want to eat it. That It's rancid or it's oxidized. Absolutely. Absolutely. Then there's Interesting. something wrong. How about capsules? How about when they're in gel caps? Yeah, the problem is you have the, the gel caps. Capsule, they have still the, the oxygen goes goes in. The in through the gel. Is you you most when you when you take like like a, a EPA or something like this, those capsules, right, or flexi capsules, right. and then you burp. And when you burp, it's, it's a typical sign there's something wrong with the oil. You know, interesting. Because the body want to get get rid of something. So when okay. it's oxidized, it's bad for you. Well, that's, that's, you know, rule of thumb, I would say. If it's oxidized, it's bad for you. That's, that's a good way of looking at it. Now, you, you focus on seed oils. Do you also use other kinds of oils, like fish oil or anything like that? Yeah, I have uh, one from Stephen, my partner. Ah, uh-huh, Stephen Ewer. Uh, yeah, that's very okay, nice, good. too. So it's not, I'm not, I'm not, uh, uh, what they call it, cursing any other oils also. I just want to make, want to, want to tell you that the oil I made or I make is the, also there's no oxidation. So this process, we, we don't oxidize. There's Do you- zero oxidation. We have protocols from uh, laboratories. The laboratories call, was calling me in the beginning. They were saying, this is not possible, this oil. And you can taste okay. the difference. You can taste the difference. You, you definitely taste the difference. You feel the difference. And, and uh, I mean, it's food. You know what I mean? I'm not talking about medication, but uh-huh. uh, what is, was it not Hippocrates who was saying food should be a medicine and medicine, medicine that's should right. be a food? That's exactly and, right. And that's, now, how I, and that's how I see it. Now, do you use vitamin E at all? Food. I'm sorry. Do you use vitamin E at all to preserve the oil? It's very, very simple. Each oil has vitamin E. But uh-huh. the most, the most vitamin E of uh, in my oils has the sunflower. The sunflower seed yeah. is very, very high in vitamin E, and you can cook also with it. So it's it's the funny part. You can cook with your oils. You're saying? <laughs> Not all the oils, just the sunflower. Because of the vitamin E. Yes. Interesting. Okay, now uh, you have six or seven different oils, correct? Eight. Actually, eight, eight oils. I have eight oils. And by the way, for the listeners, you can find out more about it at sacredseedoils.com, sacredseedoils.com, uh, and you can find out all about these oils. And also, Andreas, you have a website, too. Would you give that out real quick? AndreasSeedOils.com. AndreasSeedOils.com or Sacred Seed Oils. Uh, so tell us a little bit about uh, uh, SacredSeedOils.com. Tell us a little bit about the different oils that you have and how, why anybody would choose one over the other. Uh, okay, each oil has a different uh, com- has a different uh, structure or information from the seed. Okay, so if you if you take the different oils, for example, I, I tell you first what oils I have. I have sunflower oil, I have flaxseed oil, a pumpkin seed oil, black sesame oil, very famous in Asian kitchen. Uh, I have black cumin oil. I have. I'm the only one who can press coriander. The seed coriander of oil. Yes, it's amazing. It's so amazing. Are and these also de- fu- are, are these also delicious oils as well as being healthy? Would you yes. say? Okay. Yes. yes, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, I have a five seed blend because uh, people was asking me. I have to buy always five five bottles. Can you put uh-huh. it in one? So I so I put it and it's it's actually a, a runner because it gives you a lot of energy. So I mix it before. I don't mix it afterwards. I mix it before with the seed and press it as one molecule. Um, and hemp seed as number and eight. So and these and these seed. can be used on these can be used like on food on potatoes and salad and that kind of stuff. In addition to being as, yeah. as, as a supplement, the, the pumpkin is very famous for salad. So I have a lot of chefs on the on the pumpkin. They like the pumpkin. They like the sunflower very much because it has the taste of the sunflower. So and and when they make their dressing. Go ahead. What's the question? Uh, I was going to ask no, you, what, uh, how, yeah. how long are these oils good for? Um, I give a year minimum without ref- without refrigeration because I have it in a special bottle, Miron glass. I don't know if it is 
Yeah, I know uh, about Miron Glass. You know Miron? Okay. Oh, yeah. I was the first one in the United States, it was eight years ago, more than eight years ago, uh, who started to bring oils in, in a nice bottle which is also stabilizing, which is keeping the oil in a, in a, in a good... Uh, so you don't have to refrigerate my oils. Yeah. Do you, you don't have to refrigerate them at all? I mean, will that extend the no. lifespan if you do refrigerate them? No. The thing is, the, the, refrigerate, the refrigeration is just necessary for the oils who was, uh, who was oxidized. If you have other companies, they have between uh, 3 and 10% of oxidation of peroxide, the peroxide number is very high. We have point, we have point zero one, we have point zero two, something like this. Yeah. So there's zero oxidation. When you don't have oxidation and you you preserve it in this bottle, and it's not contacting any plastic, that was very important for me. Uh, mm. Then you you can keep it. I had bottles from five years ago, and they are yeah. still good. And they so don't oxidize I, over time. Don't they increase? Don't you have a little oxidation no. over time? Not at no, all. Absolutely no. Nope. That's we fascinating. Had, we had from two years old uh, flexseed oil bottles. We made a test, and they still had zero oxidation. That is very, very impressive, Andres. And you attribute it's it all to your process. press. And you attribute it's it to the, the process. Pr it's the process. Okay, that's yeah. awesome. So, all right, so we're out of time, Andres. One more time on your website. My website. Andres. Yeah, yeah your website. AndreasSeedOils.com, but okay. uh, I want to bring, seeds. bring everybody yeah. to Sacred Seed Oils. Sacred Seed Oils. Oils. Com, right? Yes, Sacred Seed Oils. Com to purchase the product if you want to learn more about Andreas exactly. and his work. Uh, AndreasSeedOils.com, is that right? Yeah, you get yes, uh, but Sacred Seed Oils you get also uh, more specific because my partner Stephen, he's a nutritionist, and that's the perfect match for both of us. Good deal. Uh, he is more, he's more describing uh, how everything works together. Uh, I don't. I cannot describe it because I'm a nutritionist. Okay. Okay, that's so, great. He's Stephen is perfect. That. Yeah. Uh, uh, Stephen is a good friend and uh, also a great guy, and uh, definitely has the has the uh, best interest of the human race in mind. And I love Stephen for that. Thank you so much, Andreas. Appreciate it. Good to talk to you. And uh, if you want to purchase any of Andreas's oils, go to sacredseedoils.com. That's sacredseedoils.com. Thanks for listening to the Bright Side, friends. Tomorrow we'll continue talking about the essential sugars, specifically uh, and acetyl glucosamine, and why you want to use this stuff for your skin and how you can use it for your skin. I'm pharmacist Ben. Have an awesome morning. Wonderful, beautiful, spectacular day. We'll talk to y'all later, folks. Bye for now.